Good afternoon. A lot of y'all here. <laughs> My name is Brandon Lafferty. I'm the program director here at Recovery Point Bluefield. It's our honor to have the governor here with us to unveil the Jobs and Hope West Virginia for Region 1. Would everybody stand and help me in the welcome to Mr. Gratitude for 
being given an opportunity, and ultimately, they have more to lose if unsuccessful. One of our transition agents is proof that when connected to the resources needed and given the opportunity to pay it forward, not only can they change their lives, they can also have an impact on the participants they work with. I'd like to introduce Larry McComick, one of our Region 1 transition agents, to share how Jobs and Hope has impacted his life. surreal moment standing up here beside the governor considering uh, back in February I graduated from this program I stood up here and gave my lead. Um, but this program taught me a lot. Uh, most importantly it taught me the importance of helping other people. Um, not being a selfish person and not thinking of myself all the time. So after I graduated this program I had an opportunity to get to work for Workforce and through Workforce I learned about this program <laughs> through this uh, Jobs and Hope program, and when I read like the uh, the duties and the responsibilities and requirements for it, I thought I was an ideal candidate for the position. I'm lucky to have got hired into this position because um, what we see so often is people come to, to come to treatment and they put together substantial amounts of sobriety, <coughs> but when they return home to places like Wyoming County or McDowell County, they're still faced with all the obstacles they had when they when they left there. You know, fines, no driver's license, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm blessed to have the opportunity to work with all these people to help them eliminate the barriers of employment that they, that has, that they have in front of them, which um, you know, if, when they have these barriers, ultimately sometimes it leads back to relapse or recidivism. So um, I'm grateful for this job, and um, I'm blessed because I probably shouldn't have got this opportunity with my past and things, but... Um, People saw some good in me, and every day of this job, I try to put that good out for others. Um, most, the most important thing about the whole program is removing the stigma that surrounds this disease. And I think we can do that by putting these people back out in the workforce and showing that they're worth something when, they, when everybody thought they were not. Thank you, Governor Justice, for putting this in place and allowing me the opportunity to do this. Thank you. struggling to recover and re-enter society. His vision and support for this program is allowing us to impact the lives of so many. I think all of us can agree that this man's love and passion for his state and its people cannot be questioned. I now have the honor of introducing and welcoming our governor of the great state of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice. Just talk to you just a second. First of all, Recovery Point Bluefield and what they're doing, four seasons, you know, that they're called in, in, in some in, in times, and what they're doing is remarkable. But here's what I would say more than anything. I watched Larry real close. I watched Lori. I watched you in your eyes. I watch our transition agents, but I watch the people that I know that they're interacting with. I would tell you just this, and here's all there is to it. You're really valuable, and you're really good. I know how you grew up. I know that you're faith-based, and I know that you're hard workers. And I know every last living soul of us from time to time ends up doing something that maybe we wish we could have taken back or wish we shouldn't have done or whatever the situation may be. Everybody 
everybody is subject to mistakes. But in addition to that, in addition to that, you didn't sign on for a lot of what you got into, too. You know, really, society never really realized the danger of opioids and, the, and what it could do to you. You know, I don't know if you've ever been told this, and I don't know if this is exactly right, but I want you to know, with all in me, I'm with you. I want to see goodness for you and happiness for you. I want to see you achieve your dreams. Not my dreams, your dreams. That's all there is to it. I want, I want you to see your dreams come true. Now think about this. A long time ago, and this is what I was told, so don't quote me on this as gospel, because I really pride myself in just telling you the truth. You know, for God's sakes, I live and I grew up, my grandparents never had any plumbing. I grew up playing in a coal bin a lot of times. They played kick the can in the alley. The same kind of stuff that you've done. You see, all I want to be is you. I don't want to be up on a pedestal. I just want to be you and try to help. I mean it. I mean it. Now, let's talk just a second about this terrible situation with the opioids. You know, here's what I think happened. In World War I, we discovered that these opioids were great for pain. And we knew, we knew at that point in time that they were terribly addictive. Instantaneously addictive in many situations. And so we basically said, we can't give them to anybody unless they have unbelievable pain, like a surgery, or absolutely like, you know, cancer patients. So up until like 1993 or somewhere along that line, we didn't give them to anybody. And then all of a sudden, one of these drug manufacturers, and I harbor a lot of hostility in me about the drug manufacturers, but all of a sudden somebody figured out how we could put this thing into a capsule and call it time release and call it OxyContin. And then, by it being a time release, the FDA would say it's okay to prescribe to everybody for chronic pain. Not acute pain, but just chronic pain. And so all of a sudden, we were just flooded. Flooded with these drugs. <coughs> Flooded beyond all comparison. Any, all of us are hurting. And so, you know, all of us have a need. And so all of a sudden, instead of this, just this tiny, tiny se sector of the population, now it became everybody could get on board. And doctors and drug companies, bad, bad, bad actors, caused lots and lots of our problems. And to be perfectly honest, look at me. I mean, for God's sakes of living, you know, I'm, I'm big as a bear. You know, and I ought to be on a diet, and I'm trying. I'm tr I've started 18,000 different diets and everything. It's tough. I can't fathom, I can't fathom, you know, what you're going through in every way. So we came up with a dream. A dream. It's what I believe in me, and I say it over and over because I think I should. I really give the good Lord credit for all the good ideas, and I'll take the credit for the bad ones. And believe me, B, I've got plenty of bad ones from time to time. But really and truly, this is nothing other than jobs and hope. You know, we called it Jim's dream. And then because of these per se political rules, you can't call something by your name. You know, so now we call it jobs and hope. It's exactly that. It was a dream. It was a dream that really and truly became really, really simple. Simple. And that is this. Is give people the ability to get treatment. And give them something, a component now, that people have brought to the stage that I hadn't really thought of. And that's the transition agents. Give them somebody they can associate and contact all, with all the time that can help them along the way. Gives them treatment for free. Gives them training for free.
Give them the possibility of expungement. Give them the possibility of the driver's license. Give them the opportunity to come back. We need you. We need you. But you know what? You need you. You need you for you. Don't do it for me. All I did is come up with the program and made it simple to where you could have real life training, to where you could get a real life job. I saw it over and over with my son. I was sitting in the car with him and I'd see somebody come up just like many of y'all and get out of the car and everything and say, I gotta have a job. I'll do anything. I'll work night and day. I can pass a drug test. First question the foreman would ask is, what kind of training do you have? Well, I don't really have any, but I'll work hard. And they couldn't take them. You know, believe me, B, we need you. But we need you to be able to do something. We need to be able to train you to do stuff. I really, in, in the bottom of my heart, was all in me. I want goodness for all of y'all. Every one of y'all that are helping, all of y'all that need help, every single last one of you. Because, you know, at the end of the day, and I said it a minute ago, I don't want you to do this for me. I don't want you to do this for your grandma. I don't want you to do this for anybody but you. You see, when our families become fragmented and we lose our families, we lose us. Now listen to me. And I mean it. I am so proud of what you're doing. I am absolutely so proud of our program. Will this be the answer and the end all do all that will cure it all? Of course not. I mean, let's be smart. This isn't going to be the end all cure all. But this is going to get us on our way. We don't need to graduate a class here of seven people. We don't need that. What we need to do is be graduating 7,000 and 70,000. You just think about it, our death rate, death rate is almost three and a half times what it is in the nation. Who in the world would have ever thunk it? Now be real, be just real. You grew up in West Virginia. In West Virginia, the greatest place on the planet, you almost were baited right into this because we took your hope and we gave you something that we knew was bad. We knew it was bad and everything. We took your hope away. In all honesty, somebody took your soul away. And I would say back to you with all in me, get your soul back for you. I mean this every fiber that I have in me. I love you. I know how good you are. I know how much value you have to all of us. But do it for you. I could not possibly be more proud of what they're doing right here in our transition agents, all the good stuff that we're doing. Remember, this was Jim's dream. Jim's dream. So Larry, congratulations. Congratulations, Deb, Lori, all of y'all for all you do every day. Congratulations to you guys and girls because absolutely we need you and I'm really proud of you. And I want to tell you all in me, there's no smoke blowing up your hind ends because I don't have time for that in my life. I don't have time for it. I mean it when I tell you I love you and I want goodness for you. So get on with it. It's tough. It's really, really, really tough. But we're standing here in every way saying, come on, come on. You know, we're ready to charge up the mountain. But we got to have you charging with us. God bless you in every way. Thank you all for having me.
Uh, for those interested in becoming participants, if you aren't already, we receive referrals in a number of ways from recovery partners such as Recovery Point, Workforce Offices, Division of Corrections and Rehabilitation, Division of Rehabilitation Services, and self-referrals. Our call line and website are listed on the booklets and brochures that are on the table up here if you'd like to take one as you leave. Transition agents are also here today if you'd like to speak with any of them or learn more about their role. Recovery staff is also available if anyone would like to stay with us and take a tour of the facility. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you very much to Governor Justice for giving us all this opportunity and for allowing us to give West Virginians jobs and hope.